Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Danielle Deschamps, and I am the project manager for the 2009 Cal Concrete Community Team. Here with me are Justin Butel and Will Wynn. This year's canoe was only possible with intensive research by all of our divisions and the dedication of every member of our team. So we are proud to present our guide to the San Francisco Bay Area Fair Area. Project management knew that this year's ambitious ideas and graphics would require more work hours than ever before. To avoid delays at the critical path, officers inspire team members to be more involved and go to more work sessions per week than in any previous year. Our structural analysis team initially considered 18 different loading scenarios, five more than last year. We found that the critical load case was in the co-ed sprint when the paddlers lean forward. For the first time in our team's history, we also considered hydrodynamic stresses. From principles of dimensional analysis and similitude, we developed a functional relationship between the interactions of the canoe with the water to find drag force on the canoe. To satisfy similitude criteria, we designed a unique experiment in which a model canoe is placed in a channel of running water and attached to a strain gauge. At various water velocities, force data was collected from the gauge and was used to correlate pressure drag and racing speeds. From this, we found the critical stresses that bare area would experience during the co-ed sprint. With this scale model testing, we are confident that this is the most accurate analysis of any Cal team. For the structural mix, we evaluated the environmental impact of different materials and decided to replace last year's non-recycled metacalin with fly ash and VCAS, which is made from recycled fiberglass. Latex was added to entrain the desired amount of air and improve workability allowing for more efficient concrete placement on casting day. And the retarder was added to delay setting and extend the workable life of each batch of concrete, thereby reducing waste. The final structural mix had a lower density than last year's while still exceeding structural requirements and having an increased recycled content. But the materials revision's job was still not over. Based on the design of our graphics, we determined that 10 different finishing mixes of vibrant colors were needed to realize our detailed vision of the Bay Area. We decided to replace ordinary Portland cement with a photocatalytic cement, which uses sunlight to break down common air pollutants. And we were able to come up with colors that could satisfy even our graphics department. After developing a total of 11 concrete mixes, our materials engineers took a well-deserved break and handed it over to the construction division. Early in the year, we opted for a female form to ensure accurate outer dimensions and easier form removal. Team members who wanted to help cast the canoe were required to attend training for one of three specialized labor groups, mixing concrete, placing concrete, or placing scrim. Although this reduced the number of people able to attend casting day, we found that management was more efficient and the quality of work improved. Last year, we had found that carbon fiber scrim was difficult to work with. So our construction crew developed an innovative method using screws to hold the scrim flush against the concrete, allowing for a more secure bond between the layers. By reducing batch size and increasing the setting time, we estimated a waste reduction of 30%. Bare area was then dry cured for seven days before the intricate finishing process began. First, the structural composite was covered with a layer of white finishing mix which was sanded extensively in preparation for the canoe's complex graphics. Acid stain was then applied at various dilutions to create a realistic bay on the bottom of our canoe. After cleaning the surface, we applied vinyl stencils, and then many finishing mixes were brushed on in the desired locations. We sanded the images, removed the stencils, and cleaned the surface again. A second phase of stencils was applied, followed by colored concrete and more sanding and cleaning. Another phase of stencils was applied, and well, you get the picture. The interior mural was completed after four iterations of this process. Finally, after seven weeks, we finished the interior and moved to the exterior with another phase of graphics placement. In the end, we placed over 100 square feet of colored concrete. But all of this extra care paid off when we constructed one-of-a-kind, realistic graphics depicting the Bay Area. And so, after a year of hard work, we are proud to present Fair Area as our most ambitious canoe yet. We would now like to thank everyone here for a great competition and blah blah blah.